This anime begins three years ago on an island that was being bombarded by the military. One of the soldiers suggested to his captain that they should go to the island to provide support, but the captain refused, stating that it was futile because conventional weapons couldn't harm the creatures inhabiting the island, so they depended on the hunters. We switch scenes to these hunters, who were gathering in a cleared region of the island's forest, all armed with staffs, swords, armor, and staffs. Ants emerged from the trees and all jumped to attack the group of hunters from above. One of them defended with a shield, managing to fend off as many ants as possible. A boy, with the help of the mages, began to eliminate each ant, but the ants showed great resistance and determination to keep attacking, leading to some of the hunters being brutally devoured. A mage was the only one able to harm an ant until it couldn't move, and healed the tank's wounds on the team. The ants lunged at the mage to try to kill him, but he reacted in time, casting a powerful lightning bolt that incinerated them. Another hunter, specialized in brute force, appeared and began defeating the ants with powerful strikes. Another boy supported him with his electricity magic. Together they contained the threat. The injured hunters and some who survived were relieved that the S-rank hunters had finally arrived. The hunter scolded the healer and mage, Bayungu, for rushing ahead too much. He apologized because he wanted to save more people and trusted them to protect him. A white ant appeared, the hunter analyzed it and concluded it wasn't the queen ant. They quickly ordered Bayang to take care of the wounded while they dealt with that albino ant. The S-rank hunter, named Yanhu, and his partner, Yusyok, confronted the ant. They swiftly moved towards it, Yanhu stood in front of the ant to force it to attack him. When it did, he stopped its fangs with brute force, allowing Yunsiok to take advantage and leap, plunging down and casting a lightning bolt that incinerated the ant. Yanhu used this opportunity to break the ant's fangs and used them as a weapon, piercing its body and ending its life. More white ants emerged from the trees, Yunsiok commented that none seemed to be the leader. Yanhu took advantage of this to unleash his power and with Yunsiok's help, they dealt with the group. Meanwhile, elsewhere on the island, a hunter named Choi led an army of hunters to contain a horde of ants approaching. Using his fire power, he incinerated the weaker ants, but the white ones remained unaffected. Choi ordered to attack them, and a stampede of hunters tried to impale them. Over a decade ago, portals connecting to a different dimension suddenly appeared in the world. Various monsters and magical beasts reside within the portal. Conventional weapons cannot fight them. Only those with awakened special abilities can battle against them. These people are called hunters. Based on their magical powers, hunters are classified into ranks S, A, B, C, D, E. However, once awakened, no matter how hard they try, their abilities will no longer develop. Three years later, in the present, we see a building under construction filled with people. A man named Kim met with his old friend Park, asking what he was doing in the area as he thought Park had left the life as a hunter. Park explained that his wife was pregnant with their second child. Kim suggested they could earn a lot of money if the raid they were planning in the sector was successful. Park responded that he was worried about it, as he wasn't sure if he could keep up with everyone after his retirement. A boy named Sung appeared, and Kim greeted him, asking if he had been eating properly, which the boy affirmed. Park asked if Sung was a strong hunter since everyone greeted him. Kim explained that no, Sung was quite the opposite. He joined the hunters as Park's replacement after he retired. He was popularly known as the weakest hunter in all of humanity. Park asked if Sung shouldn't be the strongest, but Kim clarified that it wasn't the case. Sung was the weakest because he entered an E-rank dungeon and still ended up hospitalized. For that reason, he was the weakest hunter. However, his presence reassured the other hunters, as it meant the mission would be easy. Park was glad to hear this, but part of him was sad because he didn't know how Sung would feel about it. Sung overheard everything and just sighed to avoid feeling down. Sung Jin Wu encountered a girl named Jokin who scolded him for appearing injured, but Sung brushed it off, happy that they would go on a mission together again. Johee asked him to be more careful, and they both went to the back of the building and sat on the materials to chat. Sung recounted how he ended up hospitalized from an E-rank dungeon because they didn't have healers. This annoyed the girl because some people, due to their abilities, needed a healer. Sung advised her not to worry anymore about it and realized they were about to start the raid, so he left. All the hunters involved in the raid gathered with the mission captain, named Song Chiel, the highest ranked hunter in the group. Song made the preparations, and everyone entered the dungeon. Sung looked at his magic knife, knowing he needed to get a better tool, but his salary didn't allow it, so he decided to put more effort into this dungeon and get a better weapon. He entered the dungeon fully prepared. Meanwhile, we see President Go with his secretary. The secretary asked how the meeting with the government went, and Go replied that it was always the same. 
The government didn't want the dungeon break to succeed to preserve the supplies and extract them steadily for everyone. Back with Sung, he obtained his first magic gem, which could cost a fortune. Jin was attacked by a goblin, and he defended himself with his knife as best as he could. The blade of the weapon cracked, and he had no choice but to dodge. When he saw an opportunity to counterattack, the knife broke, and the goblin took advantage to stab Sung. The protagonist managed to pull the weapon out of his abdomen and fell to the ground. Zhou He went to heal Sung, while he watched the rest of the hunters deal with the beasts easily. President Go tells us that magic gems obtained in high-ranked dungeons can be turned into more powerful weapons to defeat stronger magical beasts. Although mana crystals collected in the dungeon can also be used to make weapons, they don't have as good effects as gems. This makes the government want to use gems as a substitute for energy to power entire nations, as it is more efficient than all known types of energy and even causes less air pollution than thermal energy. The government has already invested in studies to know how to generate electricity with these gems. Back with the expedition, one of the hunters found an additional descent in the dungeon. This phenomenon is known as a double dungeon. When this happens, the second dungeon is usually completely unknown and of a level that cannot be calculated, so it's best to inform the hunter's headquarters before entering. Some wanted to enter to get more money. Others wanted to leave immediately because it could be dangerous. Sung decided to go to the next dungeon because he needed money to support his family. Meanwhile, we see the hunters at the headquarters undergoing tests to be classified. Some assistants gathered to recruit talented hunters, all supervised by Choi. At that moment, some thieves started robbing some hunters and tried to escape on motorcycles, but a blonde woman stopped them. It was Chang Hu. She collected all the stolen items and returned them to their owners. The civilians there recognized Chang He for being the strongest S-rank hunter of all. Some proclaimed to be her fans, others wanted an autograph. Chang wasn't very comfortable with this and just left. Back with the raid, the hunters who decided to access the additional dungeon wondered how long they had been walking after entering the cave. One of them calculated the time and revealed that 40 minutes had passed. He warned that the portal would close an hour after the boss was defeated, so they had 20 minutes to achieve something and get out. Sung began to feel guilty as he walked further, as he had dragged the whole group into an unknown dungeon. Additionally, Johee was upset because it was thanks to her that he was still alive. If the dungeon turned out to be higher than E rank, he would have faced certain death. At that moment, the hunters stumbled upon the boss room directly, which surprised everyone, as it wasn't usual to find them directly. They decided to enter. Meanwhile, Joe Gunhee, the president of the Hunter Association, tells the future hunters that the portal to the dungeons has existed for over 10 years, and there are still many unresolved mysteries in the dungeon. The hunter profession is one where life must be put at risk. Even if someone is accustomed to raids, they can die. Therefore, one should never let their guard down or be arrogant or dismissive about it. If a hunter wanted to survive, there was an important point to be cautious. Back with Sung, he entered the boss room with the hunters, and they were greeted with torches burning with blue fire. The group looked around and were amazed by the aesthetics of the room. The dungeon had several giant statues, with one of them, a king, standing out as the largest. Some saw the statue and felt disturbed by it. One of them asked where the beast was if this was the boss room. The rest noticed this, and Song noticed a magic circle on the ground. He tried to read it, and a hunter mentioned finding something written. A statue of death, holding a script in an ancient language. Song read it aloud, mentioning, The commandments of the Kartanen Temple. First, worship God. Second, praise be to God. Joe he noticed something and warned Sung to turn around. He became worried because her voice was trembling. Sung looked at the king's statue, and Joe he commented that the statue's eyes moved the moment Song began reading the ancient language. When Song finished reading the script, the dungeon's doors slammed shut violently, frightening everyone present. They began to question if they were trapped with the boss. An annoyed hunter commented that this was why he didn't want to advance to the next level. Dungeons are dangerous, and one should never underestimate them. The mere idea of wanting to explore beyond what is necessary could mean death. This hunter approached the door to try to leave. He tried to open it, but this caused a knight statue to move, brutally killing the hunter in front of everyone. The rest of the group was horrified at the grotesque manner in which the boy was executed. Sung, seeing this, was horrified. Some hunters were traumatized and suffered a crisis. They couldn't believe that the statues were indeed the boss. Everyone wondered how they could escape with their lives since no one had an object that could penetrate the material of these statues. Sung, traumatized by what he had just witnessed, wondered what rank the hunter who had just died was. He knew he must have been a D-rank hunter or higher, as he was infinitely stronger than him, yet he died in an instant. Sung thought a little more about everything and realized that this dungeon was not what it seemed. 
A D rank shouldn't die in a dungeon of the same rank, so it must be a room with a much higher level. There, the protagonist realized one thing. He remembered Johi's words about the king's statue moving its eyes. Slowly, he turned to see the statue, not averting his gaze, and at that moment, the statue's eyes glowed and moved, carefully observing Sung. Our protagonist, seeing this, was frightened, as Johi had always been right. He had been through many life or death situations. He was separated from his team and was attacked on his first raid mission. He was injured by an E-rank monster and hospitalized for several weeks. He had also come close to starving to death when he got trapped in one of the dungeons, even in a low-rank one, so he knows how to detect danger. Sung immediately shouted for everyone to duck, and the king's statue hurled a fireball that disintegrated the vast majority. The group wondered if this dungeon could be an S-rank due to the attack's power. Sung wondered if this was his moment to die. After that attack by the statue, the hunters requested immediate retreat. One of them asked to wait, as if they did anything. It would kill them. One, out of desperation, couldn't bear it and asked what they should do, since there were no more exits. Sung stared fixedly at the statue, and Song warned that no one should move, as if anyone did, the statue would attack. Song thanked Sun for the warning, without it, they would all have died. Song realized that the protagonist was confused and asked if he didn't move because he knew what was going to happen. Sung replied that no, he simply felt the danger and instinctively said it. He soon noticed that Song had lost an arm due to the attack. Song asked Sun to stop the bleeding. The protagonist tore a part of his shirt and stopped Song's bleeding. Song explained that he had been in rank B dungeons and was totally sure that the boss room was rank or S. Song thought carefully about the writing, which mentioned, first, to respect God, second, to exalt God, third, to believe in God. Whoever doesn't comply won't leave the dungeon alive. Sung deduced that this god was probably the king's statue. We changed scenes to an academy, where two students were talking about a video. A dark-haired girl arrived in class and asked one called Jinae if her brother is a hunter. She replied yes, but he's a ranky hunter and always comes back injured. Back in the dungeon, Song explained that the statue was too strong to fight, so they had to find an escape route, although it wouldn't be easy. A hunter refused to stay calm and challenged the statue, arguing that he had signed a contract with a large hunter guild and couldn't die there. Song asked him not to move for anything in the world, but the hunter refused, saying he could escape because he was the fastest in the group. He concentrated all his energy to reach the door, but in a matter of seconds, the statue pulverized the hunter with a beam. Everyone was horrified by the scene, they had no way out. Sung commented that if the statue wanted, it could kill them all, yet he wondered why the statue did nothing when they didn't move. It's not like other monsters that attack as soon as they detect an enemy. Sung remembered the writing and asked Song to review what he read. Song mentioned it was to respect God. The protagonist deduced that the dungeon had rules. He stood up, and Song tried to stop him, but realized he hadn't given in to death. Seeing Sung stand up, the statue prepared its beam to kill him, but he bowed his head before the statue, which made the boss not attack him. Sung asked the rest to do the same, explaining that the boss couldn't attack if the hunters followed the written rules. They all bowed their heads before the statue. Seeing everyone kneel, it began to smile, and gradually its face changed. Parker decided to risk moving, and when he did, the statue didn't attack. Everyone stood up relieved, but Sung wasn't calm. He knew it wasn't over yet. The statue rose from its seat, frightening the group. It began to approach them slowly. Sung commented they must follow the written rules and not break them. The next rule is to exalt God. A hunter decided to approach, explaining that he had studied religion and different gods before, so he knew some praises used for a god. He knelt before the statue and prayed to it. Sung realized the prayer was wrong, and the statue crushed him. Another hunter, who couldn't bear the situation anymore, let herself be crushed. Song ordered everyone to separate, as being together would be worse. Parker tried to escape, thinking about how to exalt the statue, but before he could think of anything, he was sliced in half by one of the statues. Sung wondered what it meant to exalt and tried to find clues in the dungeon. Gradually, the hunters died one by one. Sung realized that there were several statues with musical instruments. He ordered everyone to stand in front of the statues with instruments, but no more than two people could be in front of one. Sung left Johi by one statue and risked searching for the last statue. The room filled completely with smoke due to the stomping caused by the king's statue. Sung would confuse one statue for another as he stood in front of one with a weapon, which attempted to kill him, but he managed to survive without a leg. Sung crawled as best he could and managed to reach the statue with a musical instrument, causing the king's statue to return to its seat. The protagonist was relieved that he had narrowly saved himself. Johi quickly approached him to heal his wounds, but she was horrified to see that Sung had lost a leg. 
the surviving hunters wondered what they should do. After all, if anyone else died, there was a possibility they might never complete the following rules. The king's statue raised its hand and summoned a pillar in the center of the room, alarming the hunters, who believed it was an attack. They began to argue among themselves, but Sun calmed them, saying it was an altar. He knew because in the mythology of the gods, altars are used for offerings or sacrifices. He clarified that the third rule is to believe in God, so it's easy to deduce what it refers to. Someone had to sacrifice themselves to complete the rule. One of the hunters disarmed Song and threatened him with a sword, saying he should sacrifice himself because it was his fault they split a man with a family, who was expecting his second child in two, referring to Parker. Song remained silent, listening to this, and decided to sacrifice himself for the rest of the group. As he approached the altar, he was surrounded in a circle of fire. Sung analyzed this and wondered if perhaps the statue didn't need a sacrifice. The protagonist asked the other hunters to help him get up because he wanted to investigate the altar personally. Two hunters helped the protagonist reach the altar and were surrounded in a circle of fire. Sung asked if anyone would come to rescue them if they waited at the altar, but Song commented that they couldn't depend on them because if the portal were to close, the statues would probably kill them. Here they explain that there's a phenomenon in portals in which if someone doesn't complete a dungeon and seven days pass, it will transform into a dungeon breach or also known as a dimensional breach. The monsters inside the portal will come out. To prevent this, the dungeon boss must be defeated before the portal closes. If for any reason they can't complete the current dungeon, the king's statue will escape into the world, and that could be the end of everything. We switch scenes to Jin, who is going to the hospital to visit her mother and tells her that Sung will arrive late to visit her. Jinna took the opportunity to sit next to her mother and tell her what she did at school. Sung continued thinking and asked the rest of the hunters to approach the altar. Those who were still alive approached, causing several circles of fire to form, which provoked the altar to release an electric discharge throughout the dungeon lighting several torches with blue flames. It was at that moment that the door opened. One of the hunters wondered if they could really escape or if it was some trap of the king's statue. One of the blue flames disappeared, and the statues were surrounded by a strange blue light, slowly approaching. Sung realized that the statues moved if they weren't looked at, so he ordered no one to look away. All the statues remained still. One of the hunters couldn't bear the pressure and ran towards the exit, causing one flame to disappear. Sung realized that the blue fire represented the time limit, while the red fire represented the people on the altar. When the girl left, the exit door started to close slightly. The protagonist thought more deeply about the third rule, which is to believe in God. He suspected that the open door was probably a trap. He deduced that the king's statue was testing fear, faith, and hope. Another hunter was tempted and decided to run towards the door, managing to escape. One red flame disappeared, and a hunter tried to escape, but Sung stopped him, saying he would create a blind spot. They needed to separate a bit to have a radius of vision that allowed them to see all the statues. He explained that the blue fire was a timer. When all the blue flames extinguished, they would be saved. Song mentioned there was also the possibility that when all went out, they would be trapped. The hunter said he understood the situation, but he also had a family and wasn't willing to die in the dungeon, so he didn't hesitate to flee. This left a blind spot where a statue could move. Sung continued thinking about what to do. Song said he would stay in the dungeon and ask Johi to take the protagonist away. He explained that if someone stayed, the door wouldn't close completely, and he wanted to sacrifice himself, as he was older, and the rest were just young. Johi tried to move, but her legs didn't respond. She said she had spent too much energy healing Sung's leg. Sung understood what needed to be done, so he asked Song to take Johi. Song refused, saying he would stay. But Sung reminded him that someone had to take Johi outside. As he was the only one of the three who could still move, it was his duty to carry her to the exit. Johi didn't want to leave the protagonist behind, but he asked her to go and gave her his magic gem. Sung said they still had a dinner pending, so when he got out of the dungeon, they would meet to eat. Song understood that the protagonist had figured something out, so he knocked Johi out. Song asked the protagonist to apologize for what was about to happen, but Sung asked him not to worry about it. The captain carried Johi and left. Our protagonist was glad that the rest who survived escaped the dungeon and luckily, only he would die. Sung lowered his gaze and lamented not having taken out better life insurance. The protagonist saw a sword on the ground and decided to wield it. He asked the statues to come all at once. One of the statues didn't hesitate to attack Sung. He blocked the attack with the sword, managing to repel the first blow. However, he couldn't repel the second blow and rolled on the ground. Sung would lose an arm trying to stop the third blow and screamed with pain. 
the statues took care to torture the protagonist while he lamented not being stronger. If he had been stronger, he would never have ended up in that dungeon. Gradually, the blue flames extinguished. One blow made Sung hit the altar. He was somewhat glad because being the weakest, he had managed to go further in a too dangerous dungeon. Even though he was going to die, the statues stopped hitting Sung. He insulted one of them, and the statue didn't hesitate to hit him. Sung gradually grew to hate the hunter who abandoned him for his family. He understood his situation. After all, it's something human, but at the same time, he hated him because he was selfish. After all, all the hunters who died and those who escaped also have families to take care of, and they all risk dying exploring dungeons for money. He also hated him because before that, he thanked him. He knows that in reality, that gratitude was just a facade before betraying him because according to his way of thinking, those who put themselves above others always win. Sung said he also had a family. He desperately wanted to return alive and see his family again. In addition to that, he has his hospitalized mother and a sister he must pay for her university. A statue with a spear pierced Sung's abdomen and lifted him. He screamed with pain, rage, resentment. A sea of emotions flooded him at that moment. Sung descended towards the altar. He wondered why he had said to himself that luckily, only he would die. Sung hit against the statue, and all his blood spread over it. Sung said that was stupid and hypocritical of him. He watched as all the statues raised their weapons to kill him. At that moment, the last blue flame extinguished. A screen appeared, indicating that the secret dungeon, the week's valor, was complete. Right after the protagonist was sacrificed by the statue, a system congratulated him for becoming a player. Suddenly, Sung woke up in a hospital bed, surprised to find himself still alive. He realized he still had his whole body and wondered if it had all been a dream. He saw a man in a suit entering his room, who was delighted that Sung had finally woken up. He introduced himself as Wu Jinchul from the Hunter Association's Supervision Department. The protagonist asked why someone from the Supervision Department was visiting him. Wu explained that for now, he would call a doctor to check him over. They told Sung that he had been unconscious for three days. Sung asked if Juhi and Song were okay. Wu replied that they were, but Song might have to retire due to losing an arm and they were treating Juhi for psychological trauma. Due to her fragile mental state, she might not be able to continue as a hunter. Wu clarified that they already knew what had happened. Only six people survived the double dungeon they found. They knew being a hunter was tough, but an incident like that had never occurred before. However, when the rescue team arrived, they found him unconscious in a cave. There was no trace of a temple or statues. Wu commented that this story was hard to believe, and they would have suspected the entire group if the testimonies hadn't been consistent. Out of curiosity, Wu asked Sung if he woke up after having an awakening. Sung was surprised to hear this. It was the first time he had heard of an awakening after another awakening. Here, it's explained that a hunter's attributes are fixed when they awaken and never change. But a few hunters do awaken again. These hunters can reach rank or S. Sung wondered if he had experienced such an awakening. Wu showed him a device to measure his power, and Sung placed his hand on it. Wu commented that if there was a monster capable of instant killing, then a hunter like him shouldn't have survived. It would take an S rank hunter, but considering his history, it would be more logical to assume he underwent a new awakening. Sung underwent the test and asked for the results. Wu apologized, saying he had been thoughtless. Sung's result was 10. After this, the supervision team left. Wu commented that Sung was still too weak. Even E-rank hunters have a power of 70 or more. Sung's power placed him as a civilian. Although they wanted to get to the bottom of the matter, they couldn't continue investigating because the dungeon had disappeared. Sung wondered how he could have survived. He was disappointed with the result, hoping for greater power. He looked at the screen and wondered if they hadn't found it curious to see the system. He wondered if only he could see it. He read a message from the system congratulating him for completing a secret mission called the Valor of the Week. Having completed the mission, he now had the opportunity to become a player, and asked if he wanted to accept this. At that moment, Jinnah, the protagonist's sister, appeared to scold him, as she had found out everything and was worried. To rule out the possibility, Sung asked Jinna if she could see a screen, but she denied it. The protagonist used his system as an example, asking what she would do if she received messages from a mysterious screen. She replied that she would check the message box. Sung did so and saw that he now had a new mission called Here Comes Strength Training. Jinna bid farewell to the protagonist. Sung continued reading all the notifications, discovering that there were rules, missions, and rewards. He accepted the training mission and the system explained that he had to do 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, 100 squats, and run 10 kilometers. Meanwhile, Wu informed President Go that Sung did not undergo a second awakening. 
the president was surprised by this but relieved that a dungeon breach hadn't occurred. However, he requested that they continue investigating as there were still inexplicable aspects of the incident. The president decided to treat this as an exceptional case, so they must strive harder. At the same time, Chahi was selected as an instructor for a B-rank raid. This raid would serve as practical training for the newcomers. She commented that she didn't believe she was a good teacher, but the man told her that all she needed to do was fight as she always did. They would learn just by watching her. After all, her qualities had that value. He then reminded her that the Hunter's Guild ranked among the top five in the country, but it fell short internationally. Individual rank couldn't be increased, but experience could be enhanced, improving their overall standing. At night, a portal appeared in the middle of a highway, and all officials quickly closed the streets. Civilians were concerned that the hunters hadn't arrived at the scene and that monsters might escape. Sung ran out of time to accept the mission and was punished, appearing in a desert where he encountered a giant desert centipede. The system told him he must now survive for four hours against the monster. Sung was horrified to see it. Two nurses visited our protagonist's room and were surprised not to find him there. Sung ran for his life through the desert, fleeing from the monster as best he could. As time passed, the number of monsters increased. Sung checked the timer, alarmed to see that there were too many to have survived only two hours. The nurses searched the hospital for the protagonist, worried. None believed he had left the building, but they had to rule out every possibility. Sung was almost killed by the centipede but managed to survive in time, appearing back in his room. The system congratulated him for overcoming the punishment mission. Sung collapsed from exhaustion. The next day, he got out of bed and began the exercise mission doing it for four days, realizing that the system was something real. By completing daily missions, he received three rewards and gradually increased his attributes. Later, Sung checked his mailbox and realized that the last reward he received was a random loot box. He decided to open it, wondering what might come out now. Upon opening it, a powerful light emanated from the box, revealing a key. Sung wondered what the key was for since until now, he had only received pens and band-aids. At that moment, the system gave him a mission, which involved going to an instance dungeon. Sung wondered what an instance dungeon was but didn't hesitate to accept it since he trusted the system. After all, each mission had strengthened him so far. Throughout the city, the presence of a D-rank portal was alerted, resulting in more C-rank portals appearing in some sectors, near the center and east, and a B-rank portal in the port sector. The reporter informed that hunters had scheduled a raid that would happen soon, which would limit transportation. She asked all civilians to stay informed if they lived or worked near any of the portals that had appeared. Sung visited his mother's room and found himself feeling sad. Here we are told that four years ago, Sung found his mother on the floor. Jinnah found him and asked what was happening. The protagonist explained that his mother now wouldn't open her eyes. After she was taken to the hospital and underwent some tests, doctors concluded that she was suffering from somnisuffocation, also known as the last sleep, a disease that emerged at the same time as the portals in the world and affects one in every tens of thousands of humans. According to a medical professional in the field, there are theories explaining that this arises from prolonged contact with mana, so with current studies and technology, they can only prolong her life. This served as motivation for Sung to exercise, recalling all the jobs he took so that Jinnah could study and to pay for his mother's medical expenses. It also helped him to remember how he became a hunter. After taking the test, he was excited because he thought he would make enough money to live and save his mother, but he suffered a reality check when he couldn't pass a dungeon. This led to a situation where a group decided to expel him from the team and used him as cannon fodder against the monsters. Even though they were able to complete the dungeon this way, Sung received no reward reward because everyone he worked with didn't want to share the loot with someone who couldn't do anything. Sung gradually improved his attributes and became stronger. When he felt confident, he went to the city's subway, not without first preparing with the necessary equipment. He was sure he could survive and complete the dungeon, and in case something went wrong, he had high speed to flee safely. He followed the mission's instructions and found a hidden door at the subway entrance. He used the key and opened a portal. Sung, without fear, entered. The system warned him that he had just entered the instance dungeon. Before he could do anything, the dungeon exit closed. This worried our protagonist, who tried to leave quickly but couldn't. There he met Juhi crossing a street. He realized that the dungeon is in a different dimension, so no one can see him or the portal. Sung deduced that instance dungeons are much more dangerous than normal ones since they cannot be detected. He felt some insecurity as he had never visited one but he believes they could be similar to the red portals. Sung scratched his head with some fear and stress, planning to escape if something went wrong. 
and now he had to fight for his life if he wanted to escape. The system sent him a message, explaining that he cannot leave the dungeon until he defeats a boss or finds a teleportation stone. Sung wondered what a teleportation stone was and thought that he cannot leave the dungeon until he completes it alone. Our protagonist didn't believe he could defeat the dungeon alone since if he couldn't beat the rank monsters, he definitely couldn't complete a dungeon alone. But he carefully considered the message, wondering if he would only face a boss without a group of enemies. He gathered his courage and descended the stairs, reaching a room filled with goblins. He was scared to see there were three of them, but with his attributes improved after training, he could dodge them easily. The goblins attacked him violently. Sung defended himself with his knife and blocked some attacks. The intensity of the fight forced him to retreat, and one of the goblins managed to grab his bag and hit him. Sung rolled on the ground from the impact. The goblin quickly tried to kill him, but Sung managed to dodge in time. He saw the perfect opportunity and killed the goblin with a blow. The protagonist was surprised to have achieved it. He faced the rest of the goblins and gradually became accustomed to his new abilities, managing to emerge victorious from the fight. A monster emerged from the shadows and tried to attack the protagonist from behind when he let his guard down. Sung sensed the danger and quickly used his knife to defend himself. The monster managed to break the weapon leaving Sung defenseless. He noticed that the wolf had a metal mouth, it was the first time he had seen something like that. And just by its presence, he knew it was much stronger than the goblins before. Sung began to feel afraid, and his legs trembled. The protagonist wondered why this was happening, remembering the moment he was in the double dungeon when the statue killed him. Sung thought he hadn't been traumatized, but now he sees that his body cannot respond in situations of extreme danger. The wolf sensed the fear and lunged at the protagonist to kill him. Sung narrowly managed to dodge the first attack, receiving a cut on his cheek. Our protagonist decided to take the fight seriously since there was no healer, so any serious injury would mean game over, as he wouldn't be able to defend himself. The wolf howled loudly and attacked again. Sung looked at the wolf with fear as the monster now attacked him with its claws. At that moment, he didn't know what to do. And so, this chapter ends. The wolf decided to attack Sung. The latter unconsciously began to dodge the wolf's attacks despite being very close. The protagonist would perform a couple of acrobatics and felt his body very light. The wolf disregarded this and went to attack him anyway. Our protagonist questioned if this was why he survived. To be eternally afraid, Sung decided not to die and launched himself against the wolf at the same time it planned to attack him. The protagonist gave the wolf a strong punch in the mouth and sent it flying against the wall, wondering if perhaps this strength had to do with his increased attributes. Nevertheless, he had to be careful, as the wolf remained stronger than him. The monster lunged at Sung again, who began to throw several punches at the wolf's head, realizing he couldn't do anything to it. The monster decided to charge, which Sung narrowly avoided. The wolf crashed into the wall, denting it, and Sung wondered what he could do without a weapon. He began to worry about the situation, as he was used to relying on a team and a healer. The only thing he had in his backpack was water and food. Sung decided to run through the vast corridors, avoiding the wolf's sudden attacks. He wanted to find a weapon with magical power and it was then that an idea occurred to him. He asked the system to show him his inventory screen. He pulled out a sword from the system itself and with a strong vertical slash, struck the wolf, managing to defeat it. The system congratulated him for defeating the wolf and notified him that he had leveled up. Sung remembered he had that sword because Kim bought it for him for 300,000. It was an item beyond his reach to unlock its full potential, but he didn't have many options so he decided to make use of it. Sung noticed he no longer had any wounds or felt pain. At that moment, the wolf rose again and the protagonist was scared. Realizing there were now two wolves, Sung with the sword in hand felt more confident and exclaimed to the monsters that he was not afraid of them. Sung tried to draw the sword after that slash, but noticed the blade had sunk deeply into the ground. He managed to pull it out with difficulty and attacked one of the wolves. The monster stopped the attack with its metal jaw. Sung kicked the canine in the abdomen and with a strong slash, decapitated it. He began to compare these monsters to those guardians in the statue dungeon. He commented that these monsters didn't come close to the threat the statues posed. Sung got up to continue the fight with the remaining wolf, but the creature decided to flee. The protagonist took advantage of this moment to rest a bit, checked his statistics, and realized he had reached level 2. He noticed that upon leveling up, all attributes increased by one point.
he thought that this whole mission was actually a dungeon and checked the wolf he decapitated, checking if it had magic stones. As he placed his hands on the body, the system alerted him that he obtained items that were added to his inventory. Sung checked the items and noticed they were different from those found in a normal dungeon. He thought that if everything was managed by a system similar to a video game, then the dungeons recommended by the system and the monsters living in them might not be like those from the portals. The system alerted him that a shop had appeared near his location and Sung checked the items, not having money to buy. He decided to sell the things he got from the wolf, reaching 20 gold. He wondered if that money would have any functionality in the real world and if so, what its value would be. Through the money he obtained, Sung deduced that the dungeon he was in must be a rank E1 since he didn't earn much gold. He wondered what he should do, as he couldn't leave until he killed the boss. He had the option of getting a teleportation stone to exit, but he didn't know where to find it. Besides that, he was concerned about food and water since he didn't have much in his backpack. He toyed with the idea of defeating the boss but concluded that he couldn't do it alone, at least not in his current state. He resolved to level up by killing monsters until he reached the necessary level to defeat the boss. At that moment, he sensed a threat and saw a pack of wolves emerging from the shadows. Sung wasn't afraid of the situation and ran directly towards the monsters, defeating each one with quick and strong slashes, especially dodging attacks that could be severe. The wolves soon changed their strategy and surrounded him from all directions. Sung told them that he wouldn't be killed so easily reminding himself of everything that happened in the statue dungeon and why he decided to become a hunter. Passion motivated the protagonist, and he managed to defeat the wolf pack. For each monster he slew, he leveled up. After his victory against the wolf pack, the system rewarded him with the title, The Wolf Slayer. Meanwhile, civilians noticed that one of the street portals seemed unstable and wondered why the association hadn't done anything yet. Back with Sung, he took a breather from the exhaustion of defeating the wolves. Sung noticed that his sword was about to break, so he checked his inventory and noticed that he had obtained a teleportation stone, which delighted him. However, after surviving the pack and leveling up so much, he questioned whether it was a good idea to leave the dungeon. He calmly pondered the situation, doubting that another opportunity to become strong would arise again. He also worried about what might happen to the dungeon if he used the stone, if it would disappear or turn into a portal in the real world. He decided to continue exploring the dungeon. Meanwhile, Juhi received a message from the Hunter Association. She apologized for what had happened in the double dungeon, but the hunters informed her that a dungeon breach had occurred near her position. They explained that they were currently gathering all available hunters, but didn't have enough healers. Juhi decided to accept the mission. At the same time, we see Sung defeating all kinds of monsters, quickly leveling up. The higher he leveled up, the easier it was for him to defeat the monsters. The protagonist continued to level up and took a quick break, noticing that the color of the monster names had changed. With this, he could establish a hierarchy. White names were weaker than him, orange ones were at his level, and red ones were monsters stronger than him. With his current level, the wolves that were previously in red now turned white, which meant he had become much stronger. However, despite that, he couldn't defeat everything he might encounter, especially something located one floor below. He could sense a creature too dangerous behind all the mist covering the lower floor. He checked his statistics, realizing he was now level 15, and due to the circumstances, he couldn't advance further since the sword wouldn't withstand another fight. Despite everything, he gathered his courage and descended to the lower floor, reaching the underground metro. He analyzed the surroundings, noticing that it didn't seem like a real station. Soon, he felt a tremor and a monster struck him, throwing him against the wall. Sung was startled by how fast the creature was. Sung coughed in pain and was shocked to see the sword had broken. The monster moved at great speeds, leaving pillars of dust behind it. Despite our protagonist leveling up significantly, the monster in front of him had its name in orange. He wondered if that monster could be the dungeon boss since it didn't make sense for it to be so fast. Sung knew swords were useless against the boss because, being a serpent, it had scales too strong. Even his hands couldn't harm it. He was at a considerable disadvantage. Nevertheless, he used what was left of the sword to attack. The serpent violently charged at him, and Sung tried to cut it with the broken blade. The contact of steel with scales, combined with the speed, caused strong sparks. Sung felt some fear against the boss because it made heavy attacks at full speed. He thought of a way to reduce the creature's defense. The serpent encircled the protagonist and tried to swallow him. As fast as he could, Sung started to put some distance, defending himself with difficulty from the bites. He received a tail strike, which he managed to lessen the damage with the sword, and his body was sent flying, landing in the water. 
A direct hit from the boss would mean death. Sung quickly surfaced, but the serpent charged at him. Our protagonist managed to withstand the impact until he saw the boss hurling a train at him. He narrowly dodged it and grabbed the broken sword. He didn't want to give up because if he did, he would be proving right all those who mocked him for being weak. Sung, without fear, went against the boss. Here, several flashbacks show him, where on his first day as a hunter, he was dubbed the weakest hunter in humanity. However, there were people who tried to encourage and motivate him to improve. Sung didn't want to give up for those who supported him. The serpent cornered the protagonist against the wall and began to relentlessly beat him. Our protagonist endured all the blows, getting up again and again out of sheer will. He didn't want to be weak again, let alone be betrayed. He wanted to rely solely on himself. These thoughts caused a magical power to momentarily surround the protagonist. Sung managed to climb the serpent, gradually causing it harm. The boss disarmed the protagonist and took the fight to an aerial combat. Sung clung to the boss and with all his might managed to break the serpent's scales. The serpent became more aggressive and began to traverse the entire room, destroying everything in its path with its body. Sung endured all the damage and with his own hands managed to severely injure the serpent until he killed it. The system notified him that he had leveled up several times, and Sung began to laugh with excitement as he had proved that he had become stronger. For defeating the boss, the protagonist received a C-rank dagger, which gave him the ability to paralyze the opponent and drain their life. In addition to the dagger, he received an A-rank item, which was a poison that increased physical damage. But after using it, he was punished with weaker attributes. Sung was transported to the normal subway, and all his wounds healed. He ascended to the surface and noticed that there was no one around the city. He wondered if it was perhaps too late. A soldier approached Sung to alert him that he couldn't enter the area. He asked Sung if he hadn't heard the announcement. Sung inquired about this announcement, and the soldier noticed that the protagonist was a hunter and decided to take him to the dungeon breach. Sung was surprised to see the monsters defeated in the streets but deduced that a breach had occurred in his absence. He asked about the situation and the soldier explained that there was a giant monster causing problems. Sung managed to perceive the boss, which turned out to be a golem. The hunters were having difficulty defeating it due to the low number of healers. Gradually, the group began to argue among themselves because they couldn't do anything to the monster. Sung joined the crowd watching the fight. He noticed that the groups they formed were improvised due to the lack of coordination they had. Additionally, they were low rank, around E and D. Sung realized that Juhi was in the fight, unable to do anything due to the traumas left by the statue dungeon. Sung decided to help and prepared himself. He chose to use the broken sword he still had and took a run. He threw his sword forcefully towards the boss's head, managing to pierce all its defenses. This allowed the group to inflict damage collectively, ultimately defeating it. One of the hunters, who had the highest rank, noticed something strange because he knew that none of them could penetrate the monster's defenses. He looked towards the protagonist and wondered if he was someone of high rank. Sung walked away from the scene and glanced at the remains of the boss one last time. He was surprised by his power, as he didn't expect to defeat the monster with a single blow. He thought that the golem must have had low health, so he left without further ado. Juhi also noticed that the protagonist had been there and wondered if he had something to do with what we happened. We see all the nurses in the hospital chatting about Sung's body. None of them expected that a ranky hunter could define his muscles in such a short time. Our protagonist became someone desired by the nurses. One of them entered Sung's room to conduct some exams and was surprised to see him shirtless. She wondered if he always had a good body. Sung asked the nurse what she needed, and she revealed that he would be discharged, so she needed to conduct an examination to see if he was ready. Our protagonist responded that he was ready for the examination, and went to fill out some documents at the reception. The nurse took the opportunity to ask Sung for his phone number. He thought she would send him the exams via cell phone, so he shared his number with the nurse. The scene changes to the news, where a reporter would introduce Beek Yoon Ho to the public. Beek was one of the seven national rank S hunters. The reporter asked Beek what life was like for a hunter outside of dungeons. He told her that all hunters usually train when they are not on a mission. In his case, he trains daily because S-class dungeons are too dangerous. He explains that if the body is not accustomed to frenetic action, it would be certain death. The reporter was surprised by this and asked if training every day without rest isn't exhausting. Beak explains that he is already used to pushing himself because he was a firefighter. Jinna realized it was late and turned off the TV. She was surprised to see the protagonist awake so early. Sung asked her to be careful crossing the street. Jinna told him that breakfast and lunch were in the fridge but fell silent when she saw the protagonist's physique. She asked if he had been training, which Sung confirmed. Jinna teased him about his height and asked if that was due to training. Sung played along and helped Jinna prepare her bag. 
She said goodbye to the protagonist to go to her school. Sung took the opportunity to check the system. He was about to finish the mission the system gave him. He only had to run 10 kilometers. So he decided to leave it for later. He checked his stats to see if he could improve, noticing he had 12 unused points. He wondered what he should increase. He needed strength to deal more damage but also agility to hit accurately. He also considered vitality and perception important since they could help him survive stronger threats. He would use his points on strength, agility, and perception. Suddenly, he received a call from the building owner, who scolded Sung for not paying the rent for the month. Sung apologized and told him he would go to his office to pay. Our protagonist thought about the supervisor's words and wondered if he really underwent a second awakening as he can now easily defeat goblins. He used his cell phone to access the hunter's internet and tried to find a dungeon that offered good rewards to pay the rent. However, he was limited by his rank. He thought about the idea of taking the hunter exam again to attract attention and make money, but he was afraid that his second awakening would attract dangerous people since there had never been a hunter who could level up. He thought about the dangers of revealing his second awakening and decided to keep his power hidden until he could defend himself. The system warned the protagonist that he must complete the training mission, otherwise, he would be punished. Sung quickly went jogging, completing the mission of running 10 kilometers, claimed the rewards, and a group of hunters greeted the protagonist. One of them introduced himself as a Twang Dongsuk. The group of hunters would recognize the protagonist by his title as humanity's weakest weapon. H. Wang asked his companions to be polite with Sung, then handed a form to the protagonist, as they need hunters to tackle a dungeon. The group explained that they needed a minimum of 8 hunters to enter a C-rank dungeon, with half of the group needing to be C-rank or higher to ensure everyone would come out alive. H. Wang clarified to Sung that, being E-rank, he wouldn't receive loot, but they would pay him $200,000 for joining the group. The protagonist observed the hunters and analyzed them with his perception, noticing there were 4 degrees Celsius rank hunters and 2D rank hunters. Sung agreed to join the group and asked what he needed to do. H. Wang told him his only task was to carry the team's luggage, emphasizing that he needed to be careful as the backpacks contained rations, clothing, spare weapons, and first aid kits. Sung asked if they would be going into the dungeon without healers. H. Wang reminded him that it's difficult to call a healer for a particular group but they could survive with the first aid kits. The protagonist decided to sign the form, realizing that it mentioned they wouldn't be held responsible for any accidents. The guy named Yu Jinho approached the protagonist to greet him. He was a D-rank hunter who joined as support for the team, just like Sung. Sung was surprised that Jinho was D-rank, as he had rare equipment. With the whole group assembled, they went to find the portal, coming across one that was abnormally large. Sung became concerned and asked H. Wang if the dungeon was really C-rank. He explained that according to the Hunters Association, the portal was C-rank despite the anomaly, and he trusted them because two researchers had explored the area. Sung reassured them, saying the size of the portal didn't matter, but rather the magical waves inside. He explained that the association measures magical waves to evaluate the dungeon's rank. Those considered dangerous are usually B-rank and above, typically for large guilds. Any dungeon below B-rank is considered less threatening. The group entered the portal and found themselves in a vast, dark corridor. A hunter from the team used light magic to illuminate the way. H. Wang began to suspect the situation, as there were no monsters nearby. Sung remained alert at all times, as this reminded him of the statue dungeon. Soon, they encountered several paths to choose from, and Jinho asked if it's normal for a dungeon to have no monsters. Sung concentrated and sensed that the monsters were hidden. The rest of the group also detected these monsters and wondered what kind of creature moves in the darkness. Sung warned them that they were insectoid monsters and that they pursue light. The group didn't know how to act, as they perceived sounds from all directions. Sung shouted loudly, alerting them that the monsters were coming from above. The group's mage quickly cast a light spell that took out a small group of insectoids. A swarm of ants appeared to attack H. Wang. He used his hunter power to paralyze the ants with fear and make them attack him. The rest of the group took care of eliminating the ants one by one. Sung would notice that the group remained well coordinated and deduced that they must be a team that had been working together for some time. However, they made several mistakes and were clumsy with their movements, understanding why they didn't have a healer. An ant lunged to attack Sung from behind, but he pulverized it with a kick, making sure none of the team noticed his power. After a long combat, the group defeated the ant swarm. Everyone began to collect the magic stones. Each one thanked Sung for warning about the attack and asked how he could sense the ants. Sung remained serious about this and told him it was just intuition. 
one of the team members noticed that one of the ants was defeated barehanded, and some others were chewed up. They deduced that there must be a stronger monster nearby. H Wang began to think about what creature could hunt ants. Thanks to this conversation, Sung would notice that the team was plotting something and advised Jin Ho to be more careful from now on. The scene changes to the Hunters Association, where several of them are training in the gym. Beak was in the same gym practicing his punches, which were so strong that they made the whole building tremble. Back with the protagonist, he continued exploring the dungeon with the group. They spent several hours exploring tirelessly, as the dungeon was too large but empty. Jin Ho worried about Sung, asking if he needed help carrying the luggage. The protagonist told him that help wasn't necessary, but he was attentive to what the team would do, as he truly doubted that a C-rank hunter would offer so much money to an E-rank one just to carry backpacks. Along the way, they encountered more severely injured ants. Each one pointed this out, saying it's strange that they hadn't found a single intact ant. One of them mentioned that it was probably a boss that had injured the ants. They continued advancing and reached the end of a hallway with a lot of spider webs. H. Wang deduced that this must be the boss room. They advanced carefully through the spider webs, finding a mana or vein. Everyone knew that this mineral was worth less than magic stones, but in such quantity, they could become millionaires. Jin Ho decided to help some, explaining that he knew about laws, and asked H. Wang that this time, the profits from the mana ore would be distributed among all of them. H. Wang agreed to this but mentioned that they must defeat the dungeon boss first. He then pointed to the ceiling, where a giant spider was sheltering itself in a shell of spider webs. H. Wang mentioned that if they defeat the boss, the portal will close, so they must extract the mineral first and then defeat the boss. But they had to be careful because the spider was currently asleep. The group decided to retreat, leaving Sung and Jin Ho behind. They recommended not to wake up the spider until they brought the necessary equipment to extract the minerals. Jin Ho wasn't very sure about this, as anything could go wrong. However, H. Wang insisted that they stay and trust him. Sun knew they wouldn't come back, as he found it strange that a group so prepared for a C-ranked dungeon didn't have anyone to handle these contingencies. The group decided to betray Jin Ho and the protagonist. They set up an explosion and locked both of them with the spider. Jin Ho was scared by this, Sung didn't show surprise but was indeed annoyed by the betrayal. Here, they tell us that there are hunters who often betray others for fun and pass these events off as accidents. According to the laws, accidents in dungeons cannot be revealed, therefore, some people take advantage of this to kill others and make it look like accidents. This is because in a dungeon, there are no cameras or anyone supervising the excursion, so it's a perfect opportunity for anyone to kill another. Jin Ho felt guilty about the situation, as he believed that, by defending Sung, they were betrayed. The protagonist looked closely at the boss, who finally woke up. Jin Ho prepared himself and advised Sung to step back, as he would take care of it. Our protagonist was afraid to face the spider, as it would be his second boss he would face. However, remembering what happened with the statue, he lost his fear and dropped the backpacks. Sung summoned his new weapon and asked Jin Ho to stay away as much as possible, as he would defeat the spider himself, thus initiating a duel between a C-rank monster and an E-rank hunter. If you've reached this part of the video, comment the word hunter in the comments. Remember to subscribe so you don't miss the next part of this anime.